So, welcome straight to Battle Games to another Gbitch YouTube video. You're here with your host, Gbitch Damien, and this is my hobby vlog number 30. And it's also my um, last one of the year, so that's quite fitting, I think, to end a nice round number. And if you've been following these things, you'll know that I've been working on Mountain Thranduil. And the good news is, uh, not just for this vlog, but for the league final, he's finished. He is indeed. I got him done in time, and now I'm going to drop him. That would be awful. So, um, there he is. Uh, here is my Mountain Thranduil, beautifully converted by Mr. Dave Fredericks into a stag. If you like this conversion, um, you can um, either order the antlers from Shadow and the Flame for five pounds or um, ask Dave to do it. He's a very busy man at the moment now. Um, and this is my uh, finished Mount of Thrandall, which all told, I'm pretty happy with. So you saw him, um, when you, see him you saw him two weeks ago and I think I'd done the face on him, maybe the armor, but basically everything just had loads more highlights done to it. So, um, you see in there on the cloak. Like that. Cloak is always I never find that grey cloaks show up particularly well on these things on the highlights, but it's quite a kind of a bit of depth in him. Um I'm reasonably happy with him. He wasn't he certainly wasn't again the best work. It's been a while not since Saruman. I've spoke have I been really, really pleased with the model. I mean I suppose I've been doing a lot of warriors so it's not the same, but um yeah he's not he didn't come out perfectly. I'm really frustrated with the face. I found this with the um, foot one as well. I think, um, <coughs> humbly, the paint job on the face is pretty good. I think I was happy with it, but I just don't like the sculpt of the face. I don't think it looks like him at all. I think the old, the first Hobbit Thranduil, the one in the robes with the sword pointing down, was a great likeness of Lee Pace. And I just don't really get this one, to be honest. But um, So there's only so much you can do with it. It's a bit like the um, plastic Tariel. So the model doesn't do you any favours with the... Um, the face. Where's my focus gone? There we go. But um, there we go. Uh, obviously, I hadn't done anything on the elk um, last time you saw him, and it is just basically um, a selection of browns. I had. I was working from um, I think Gorthor brown, um, uh, Scor scorch brown, a uh, rhinox hide, isn't it? And then um, bane blade brown, and just kind of mixing them and just doing loads of layers, kind of like I did my elf cloaks. I'd do a highlight, and then I'd make a darker color and paint that into the recesses, and then make a lighter color. And it's created, um, I think, quite a nice kind of natural um, range of colours um, on him. Uh, I think the hair was largely done when you saw it last, so no no change there. And obviously the base is just painted to look a bit like Dale, with this kind of brownie, creamy finish. Um, so yeah, there he is. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with him. It's a lovely model. Really glad to get him done. And I think I told you in my last hobby vlog that I said uh, in SPG issue 2 that I'd have him done next, which was back in February, so it's good to get one of those four models um, finally done. But um, yeah, he was he was great, I got him done in time, I glued the um, static grass down to him at about 2pm on last Friday and then got straight in the car to the league final. Uh, so he might have less static grass on um, him than some models because it's all been knocked off. But he then um, performed admirably for me. I haven't done a tournament review, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the chance now or if I'll meet up with Tom, but um, my Elf Army won two out of three games and came damn close to winning the um, uh, third game against Mr. Dave Nolan's um, All Fell Beast Army. So I was really pleased because I didn't have a cast start and it was a fluffy army. Um, it wasn't overly competitive at all and it did really damn well against an incredibly tough build and um, it, I, I kind of killed three of the fell beasts and killed Shelob but unfortunately it was seized the prize and so that just wasn't enough and he managed to scarper off the board edge with uh, the prize um, but yeah Thrandall was great, really good fun to use, proper hand grenade model and I know the um, traditional tactic is to charge him straight in then dismount him so he gets more, you know, charge him in so he gets the charge bonus and then dismount him from that point on but I was just, I had that kind of new model feeling, you know, where I'd only just painted them and I really like what Dave did with the elk and wanted to keep them on the table. So I think, um, I think Thrandall actually, he, he kept his elk for the entire tournament. He, the first game he survived and he was still on his elk. The second, no, sorry, the first game he died and his elk died the same turn he did. The second game he survived and his elk survived, and the third game he survived and his elk survived. So that was that was quite cool, if perhaps not <laughs> tactically tactically the issue. But there he is. I have the um, king of the woodland realm to lead my arm at last, and so into the case he goes. And there is the army in all its red and gold glory. Really, really happy with it. It does make quite a cool sight. I really enjoyed using it um, over the weekend. An awful lot of red and gold. 
and of course my little Merkwood Ranger contingent over here. So as we know, as you've been watching the hobby vlogs, the whole force isn't done yet. I still need to add in two knights, Megalus and a new Tariel. But um, it's it's nice to have it done, have it sitting in the cabinet and looking. And that is kind of my uh, 2015 project right there. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, that's the one I was talking about. That's the one I think is a really nice sculpture's face compared to that guy there and that guy there. So yeah, that is my kind of elf army. You'll see a bit more of that in the early months of 2016 as I finish off those last bits. And as I showed you last week, I knew that I would have this week, sorry, as I showed you two weeks ago, I knew I'd have this week um, a couple of nights painting perhaps and no time to start something new. And I said I'd try and finish off Gandalf and in spectacularly unexpected and good news, I got him done. So here he is, my latest version of Gandalf. Um, always good fun, um, kind of digging through these these kind of character models. Um, I've got every, um, like so many people, I've got so many Gandalfs. I think I've got six more Gandalf the Greys. I've got five or six more Gandalf the Greys in some version uh, to paint along the line, um, as well as I think three Gandalf the Whites. But um, it's good to get another one. It's this, it's the Dull Gordle model um, that. Came with the Bilbo jumping over the tree stump. I think it's a lovely model, very different for Gandalf. I think. I think they, they found, in, with, after all the Gandalf models, they they did well to find a new pose. Um, I probably talked you through this about six weeks ago, or maybe eight weeks ago, at some point when I first introduced him. But I have done a conversion on this model to lengthen the staff, just um, increased it by adding a, um, I think it's a paper clip covered in green stuff or something like that, just to um, make it a bit longer because it's a quite a short staff. Really like it. Um, the scabbard here is bent a bit, but I don't mind that because the blade's coming out of it, so I think that's actually quite realistic because the, the leather could be bent. Um, lovely, lovely likeness to Ian McKellen. Trying to get a decent kind of lighting and focus on there. I was quite pleased with how the face came out on this guy. I think he's quite good. The eyes look quite nice, I think. Um, lots and lots of character in there. Um, really lovely sculpt. And yeah, just a cool dynamic pose. So I'm happy to get him done. He's the only the third Gandalf I did. I did my um, Kaz Dun one when I first got into the game. Five, or sorry, got back into the game five years ago, and um, and was uh, he looks a bit ropey now, if I'm brutally honest. And then I did my Rivendell Gandalf uh, a couple of years ago, which, if I'm honest, I still think is probably a better paint job than this one. Um, I think Rivendell Gandalf, everything just kind of clicked for me on for some reason. Um, but this one's a nice new dynamic pose. It's kind of slightly more uh, aggressive kind of fighting pose as opposed to Rivendell Gandalf. Where's my focus gone? There he is. Um, but I'm happy with him. Uh, he looks cool. It's nice to get a kind of Hobbit version done with his silver scarf. And um, yeah, I was quite pleased. And he didn't actually take me that long when I went back to him. He was a lot closer to being finished than I thought. So I think I just um, played around with him for a couple of hours. Just again doing the same thing I did with Thrandall's Cloak. Adding like lighter greys for the highlights and then putting darker greys in. And just kind of repeatedly doing that until I was kind of happy and just decided he was finished. But um, yeah, so there we go. There is um, Gandalf. One last look at his face, shall we? If he wants to play nice. There he is. Suddenly comes screaming into focus. So it's a lovely model. Um, someone wrote when I put a picture up about it uh, that they were surprised that they thought it was a conversion because he didn't have his hat. But the hat in this pack is entirely detachable. So you can, not detachable, um, it's an option. It doesn't come on him, it's got a hole in it so you can put it on if you want. And I thought um, for this kind of scene you shouldn't have it. And that was my last model. And that, dear viewers, meant that in 2015, I painted 54 models. I did a tally um, and came up with 54 models. Um, I put this on the Facebook group and there was, uh, there was a lot of chatter about it as to how good that was or how bad that was. Um, it turned out it was a lot less than some people but um, also more than some other people. So um, It's the lowest I've painted in a year since I've been back in the hobby. Um, I did something like uh, from 2011 onwards, it was something like 120 models, 180 models, 80 models, 60 models, and now 50 models, um, which is a bit of a shame. But I'm going to try and um, kind of up that for next year. Um, and I've got some plans about that and exactly what I'm going to paint. And I will tell you all about those in um, my next hobby vlog, which will come in two weeks on, 
I think it's Monday the 4th or Monday the 5th of January, uh, where I'm going to talk you through my plans for 2016, and um, and hopefully see you then. So yeah, um, there won't be one next next week on the, what would it be, the 28th, I won't have a whole vlog then because I won't have done anything, but um, I will be back uh, at the start of January with my uh, kind of 2016 plan. But until then, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and uh, a Happy New Year and that you get lots of new hobby stuff and maybe you get some hobbying done if that's the kind of thing you do over the holidays. And um, I hope you've enjoyed my hobby vlogs over this year. Um, I think I did 21 this year. I think I started on number 9. So just under one a fortnight for me, which um, is about is about right for me. I think it's. Uh, I'll try and keep that up into the new year. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed them, and I hope you've enjoyed this final one. Have a great Christmas and Merry New Year. As ever, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. Support your hobby host by clicking on the link below. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your hobby, hobby and happy strategy. Bye again.